Hi everybody, today we're going to begin a lesson on circular motion. Now up to this moment in my series of lectures we've actually only been doing linear motion. In fact even when we did projectile motion which had a curved path to it, technically a circle, we always kind of broke it apart into its horizontal linear part and its vertical linear part, make life a little bit easier. But more of the universe actually travels in a circle than really in a straight line, so circular motion is very important but it also is a lot more complicated than linear motion. Now, let's start off with sort of a quick scenario, a sort of paradox. In this situation, we have two objects, in this case two bugs, uh, sitting at different places on a rotating platform. Now, if we set them into motion, we notice that they stay at the same points relative to each other. In other words, they stay on the same line the whole time. So therefore, they must be moving at the same speed. However, the bug here on the outside has to travel a much longer distance than the one on the inside. Um, and according to these velocity vectors, this one must be going much faster, which makes sense, larger distance than the same time. So if they're moving together at all times, they have the same speed. Yet, clearly, this one has to be traveling at a much higher speed in order to cover that distance in time. So, that's kind of a paradox. Two things that appear to be true and yet contradict each other. How can they have the same speed and different speeds at the same time? Well, that has a lot to do with the way that circular motion works. It turns out there are some similarities between linear motion and circular, or sometimes called angular motion. But to begin with, understanding a circle. A circle is divided into 360 degrees, or something called 2 pi radians. Now, you may or may not have learned this in math yet. You probably know the 360 degrees. You may not know the 2 pi radians. But in the end, what is a degree? Other than one 360 of, the, of a circle, uh, you know, what's a radian? I uh, heard an interesting definition. The radian has something to do with the angle that creates an arc length of a circle that's equal to the radius, whatever that means. So the important part is that 360 degrees and 2 pi radians are the same type of measurement. They equal the same thing. But usually when we talk about going around a circle, we talk in terms of revolutions. That's a more normal thing. Okay, One time around the circle is one revolution. Five spins is five revolutions. Okay, But one revolution is 2 pi radians. Now notice we're focused on that radian thing. The radian is the standard unit in physics of measuring things in terms of circular motion. But unlike a meter, meter per second, kilogram, it's not a true physical unit um, because it's the same for all circles no matter what. And that sort of makes it a little bit of a different type of thing to deal with. So that'll be kind of the confusing thing. Now don't go changing your calculators around. Your calculators need to stay in the mode of degrees, not in radians but the radian is the kind of a unit we're going to use here. Now, just like in linear motion, where we had to understand some basic things like displacement, velocity, and acceleration, we need to do the same thing in circular motion. And so now we're going to talk about angular displacement. And the symbol for angular displacement is the Greek letter theta, as shown there. And angular displacement is the amount of rotation. In other words, it has to do with those revolutions that you're going to make. The number of times you go around the circle, the number of times you spin, anything like that. The number of times you turn. And the standard unit of theta, of angular displacement, is the radian. However, like I said, there are some similarities between linear motion and angular motion. So it turns out that if we have an angular displacement, we can convert that into a linear displacement. Now think about that. If you were to allow a tire to roll down the street, well, the tire is turning, making circles, but it is still going forward, covering a linear distance. Now, a bigger tire, if it turns the same amount of times as a smaller tire, will actually get you farther. So there must be some sort of difference in those things. They may spin the same amount of times, but they go a different distance. And that's how we can convert these things. Turns out to get any linear displacement, I need to know what the radius of my circle is 
and then the amount of rotation. And that will allow me to convert angular displacement theta into linear displacement x, which will still be measured in meters. So for example, let's say I have my two bugs here, bug A and bug B, on my rotating disk. And we allow them to rotate. And they're going to rotate through a certain angular displacement. In other words, a certain angle that forms here. Now notice that the angle is formed by these two lines right here. And so right away we can see that whatever angular displacement, however much A rotated, B rotated the exact same amount. Okay. So let's say, for example, that they only rotated one quarter of a revolution. Okay. So they clearly rotated the same amount. Now, unfortunately, though, if we want to look at their linear displacements, in other words, if we look at this length right here versus this length out here, in other words, if we were to pull those off and straighten them out, we'd have very different lengths. So the angular displacement of A does not equal the angular displacement of B. They're different. So we need to figure them out. Well, displacement is radius times angular displacement. But that one quarter revolution is a little bit of a problem. We need things in radians. So we've got to do a little converting here. So let's do a little dimensional analysis. So I have 0.25 revolutions over 1. And if we remember our conversion, there are 2 pi radians, the unit we need, in one revolution. That allows us to cancel out that revolutions. And we end up with an angular displacement of 1.57 radians for both A and B. They both rotate the same amount. Now, then the linear displacement that A undergoes would be its radius, which let's say the radius of A is 10 centimeters. The radius of B is 4 centimeters. So this would be 10 centimeters, 0.1 meters, times 1.57. Or it would have rotated 0.157 meters. However, for B, we need to take its radius and its angular displacement. So 4 centimeters, or 0.04 meters and still 1.57 radians. Again, it is rotated the same amount as A. So its linear displacement is only 0.0628 meters. Okay. So clearly it travels a shorter line even though they rotate the same amount. So what we're seeing here is that both points turn the same amount, have the same angular motion, but in terms of linear distance, if these were two wheels, they would roll very different distances. And again, that's the tricky part. Second thing in terms of motion, just like in linear motion we dealt with linear velocity, we have to deal with circular or angular velocity. The symbol for angular velocity is another Greek letter, that is the lowercase Greek letter omega. It's not a W, it's an omega. And this has to do with the speed at which something rotates, the speed at which something spins. And the unit of angular velocity, the unit of omega, is the radian per second. Now, again, that's not something we're commonly used to hearing. A lot of times we hear something in terms of RPMs, revolutions per minute. But much like with displacement, we can convert angular values into linear values. In this case, to get linear velocity, I need radius times angular velocity. Now notice, we seem to already be seeing a common thread. That radius seems to be very important into converting an angular term into a linear term. 
So for example, we had our two sort of bugs spinning on that uh, platform there. Let's say that they are both rotating at a rate of 50 RPM, 50 revolutions per minute. Uh, again, we'll go with the same radii. Let's say that A is at 10 centimeters and B is at 4 centimeters. And I want to know what their angular velocities are and what their linear velocities would be. Okay. So now again, the idea with the angular velocity to be in standard unit really just requires a little converting because they have to have the same angular velocity. They have to rotate together. Now, 50 RPM, that stands for 50 revolutions every one minute. So we've got a couple of things to convert here. First of all, 2 pi radians is in one revolution. That allows the revolutions to cancel, and I've got my radian part. Now, the other part is that one minute, which now goes on top, is 60 seconds, because I want seconds on the bottom. That allows the minute to cancel out, and I find out that the angular velocity of A, which equals the angular velocity of B, they both equal 5.24 radians per second. And that very odd unit, 5.24 radians per second. So they both maintain the same angular velocity. But what about that linear velocity? Well, as we saw, linear velocities are radius times angular velocities. So the linear velocity of A would be its radius, 10 centimeters, 0.1 meters, times 5.24, or 0.524 meters per second. The linear velocity for B would be its radius, 4 centimeters, 0.04 meters, times the same angular velocity. Both points rotate at the same speed, so they have the same angular velocity, which gives you 0.21 meters per second. A much lower one because it's closer to the center of the circle. So that kind of fits with our little paradox, doesn't it? Let's look again at the ladybugs. So here's our sort of ladybugs, and here's a couple of different graphs of what's going on. Here we have the angular displacement of the platform and the ladybug on the inside and the beetle on the outside. Here we're going to have the angular velocity of the platform and the angular velocity of the two bugs. And here we have the linear velocity of the two bugs. So let's go. There they go, spinning around and around and around and around. Now I'm going to stop for a second. Now notice. The displacement of the platform, ladybug, and beetle are all exactly the same. They all spin the same distance. The angular velocity of the platform, ladybug, and beetle, all the same. They all spin together at the exact same rate. But down here at linear velocity, notice that the ladybug on the inside, going only 20 meters per second, but the beetle on the outside, much further radius, has a much higher velocity. So here's the answer to our paradox. Do they have the same speed? Yes. In terms of circular motion, they must all rotate at the same rate. Do they have different speeds? Yes. In terms of linear motion, they must move at different speeds. One last thing to sort of look at real quick. Notice what direction these velocity vectors are pointing at this moment. And now, Notice they're pointing this way. Notice they're pointed this way. Notice how they're always pointed 90 degrees to this sort of radius line. That must mean something important. And that is, what happens when an object leaves circular motion? Okay, what happens if something is moving in a circle and it suddenly wants to leave that circle? Well, as we saw, as anything that is rotating has an angular velocity, and both points have the same angular velocity, 
but the linear velocities we notice were pointing 90 degrees to the radius. Okay, sometimes that's called on the line tangent to the circle. A tangent line is one that is 90 degrees to where it comes in contact with the circle. And that's the direction of their linear velocities. Which means if they're going in a circle and they suddenly switch from a circle to a straight line, they're going to travel in exactly that, a straight line tangent to the point where it leaves the circle. In other words, what direction it's going at that particular moment. That is a very, very important concept. When any object traveling in a circle leaves that circle, it will move on a straight line tangent to the point where it left, and it will travel at that linear velocity. So once again, any object moving in a circle has two velocities at the same time. Angular velocities that are the same, they spin at the same rate, linear velocities that are different. The greater the radius, the greater the linear velocity. That leaves one thing left, angular acceleration, which is given by the Greek letter alpha. That's an alpha, not an a there. Where linear acceleration is the change in linear velocity over time, angular acceleration would be the change in angular velocity over time. But in terms of the circle, you could also change your linear velocity and therefore have an acceleration. The unit of angular acceleration is the radian per second squared. And again, we can convert angular accelerations into linear or tangential, because these are accelerations along the edge of the circle. Well, guess how it's done? It must be via that radius. In other words, to get my linear or tangential acceleration, I take my angular acceleration and multiply by the radius. And that gives it to me in meters per second squared. So, if we have our two points and they are spinning with some initial angular velocity, and we allow that velocity to change, increase or decrease to some final velocity, that means that there is some sort of angular acceleration based on the change in that velocity over time. Okay. Just like back in linear motion, linear acceleration was a change in velocity over time. Same idea. And again, to convert acceleration, we multiply by the radius. Again, that seems to be a very common relationship. To get my tangential velocity, radius times angular velocity. To get my linear displacement, radius times angular displacement. By the way, this sometimes in math is called arc length. If you haven't learned that, you'll probably hear that in math. The same thing is called the arc length, linear displacement. Okay, so that's the basic idea of introducing circular motion or angular motion. Things moving in a circle have two things occurring at once. Circular motion all the time, and at any given moment, a linear motion. There is an angular displacement, which is the distance it turns, sometimes called the arc length. There is angular velocity, the rate at which it turns, how fast it's turning. And angular acceleration, any change in your velocity over time, your angular velocity over time. And we can convert angular terms into linear terms by multiplying by the radius. At any point in the circle, all angular or circular values are the same, but the linear values are different depending on the radius. A little tricky, I know. See you next time.